Welcome back, vertical followers. Great to have you. I'm uh, here with the 66 today. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about pre-flighting. I'm not going to be specifically pre-flighting this one for this video, but um, just some some general things because I think you know when you go flying, the first step is getting to the hangar, checking the weather, and flight planning, all those kind of things. Those are important. But getting to the helicopter and doing the pre-flight is really fundamental and really important. I think, you know, in the years that I've uh, been flying, there's some things that have stuck out to me that are probably the most important. We'll have a, a look over here and a couple different thoughts. And these are these are just general thoughts, um, but I think they're they're important. So one is however you do your pre-flight, everybody does them a little bit differently. Some people, you know, start at the nose and they go around to the right. Some people go around to the left. Um, some people start at the back. Some people start at the front. Some people start at the top. Every helicopter has its own uh, thing, you know, th there's different things about uh, each helicopter that makes you want to do it in a specific way. Now, I think what's important, it's not about which way you go or which where, where you start, but having a system. So being systematic about the way that you do it is important because if you're always doing it the same, the likelihood of you making a mistake and missing something is less and that's the most important thing because you, uh, you don't want to get halfway through your pre-flight, get distracted, come back and then go, oh, did I do that? Did I not do that? And, uh, and I think having a system where you always do it exactly the same way is probably one important step, uh, probably the first one. The second one is distractions. So, um, you know, having your cell phone in your pocket, you're, you're getting in here and let's say uh, you're doing a check on the oil. So you got this open and you're pulling this out. A little sticky here today. And you're checking the, oh, all of a sudden the phone rings and I didn't tighten this up. I'm gonna grab my phone. Oh, this is a really important call. Uh, let me just uh, step away here for a second. Yeah, I'm taking the call. Okay, I get back, the call's done. Okay, um, everything is finished in here. Maybe it was a really disturbing call, who knows. And uh, okay, I think we're good in here. We close this up. You guys see any problems? Did I miss anything? Well, what I missed is that I didn't tighten this back up before I took that phone call. So again, having systems in place where you're thinking about ahead of time, I'm gonna, eliminate all the possible distractions that I can. So in this case, you know, maybe don't take a phone call while you're in the middle of a free flight, or if you're going to, maybe make sure that you finish off the last task that you did. So if you open this up, you're never gonna answer that call until this is back in, tightened up, rags are back out and so forth. So that kind of brings me to my next one, is uh, systems in place while you're pre-flighting things. So um, let's say you're gonna have a rag. It's a great thing to have for a pre-flight. You're gonna be wiping things, checking uh, that you know the no oil, no oil is leaking out of different areas and so forth. Great to have a rag with you, but if you're always in the habit of just leaving that rag somewhere, I'm gonna leave it on top of the helicopter here, I'm gonna leave it inside here or here, or underneath the helicopter or in the cowling somewhere, the likelihood of you losing that someday in an area that might be a critical spot is probably pretty high. And so having a good idea of always keeping that rag into your, in your hand till the very end and then go discard it in the garbage or keep it in your pocket if you need to or whatever the case, but keep it away from the aircraft. Don't have a common habit of putting it inside the aircraft where it could possibly get missed. Um, so that's, uh, that's another one as well. So having a, a look around the helicopter, make sure you go in detail about all the different things. So in my mind, there's two different types of pre-flights. There's the morning pre-flight, so the first pre-flight of the day, which is sort of your really in-depth one. That's where you're gonna get over all the parts of the helicopter and uh, check all the little things. And what you're really checking for is, is it different than the last flight that you had? So are there things that are worse on it today than, than it was yesterday? Wires that are chafing, things like that, that it's not necessarily a major problem that you're gonna find, maybe you will, but it's something that with time is, is gonna uh, uh, end up in, a, in an issue or a problem. So those are the types of things that you're looking for, all the little details over the helicopter. But then you have the intermediate uh, pre-flights, which is the ones in between flights when you're on a busy day, um, you're fighting fire all day you've got a, a really busy day but you fueled up the helicopter you just want to have a quick look basically you want to just check your fluids and your rotating parts it should uh, take you five minutes or less depending on the helicopter it's gonna be a really quick check so just those vitals of the aircraft making sure that you're having a look over those I think that's a really important thing as well and then lastly the last thing that I just want to talk about is um, when you are finished your pre-flight and everything's gone away, the regs are away and all that kind of stuff, and you go and sign the aircraft out, maybe you file your flight plan, whatever happens to be, the last thing is the final walk around. And this is probably the most important one, I think, um, out of the whole thing, because this is where um, stupid mistakes get made um, and you know covers get left in and uh, the regs and tools, whatever it happens to be. Or maybe while you're inside, just for those two minutes while you're signing out the aircraft, 
the engineer just very quickly came out here, had a little ladder in the back. He just wanted to do a quick check on something. He didn't tell you about it. And now you come out here, you just hop straight in the helicopter, fire it up and go flying. And there's a little ladder sitting back here, tail rotor. Sounds like it's impossible to miss something like that. It really isn't. Or maybe a fuel cap was left off or a cowling was left open or something. So the final walk around, no matter if you've been gone from the helicopter for half an hour, for two minutes, even 30 seconds, uh, if you've left the helicopter, now it's time to do your last walk around. So you get back and again it's a systematic thing we're not doing a pre-flight this shouldn't take uh, five minutes it's just a final walk around make sure did i miss anything that i and you don't even need to touch the helicopter sometimes people like to step back so they can kind of look at it from a bit of a different view i personally do like to touch the helicopter so if there's a cowling something that has a latch that uh, needs to be closed I personally like to get my hand on every latch. Doors, I like to check all the doors. If I have my, all my passengers in the helicopter already, I like to check all my doors, make sure that they're properly latched up and nothing, nothing's gonna come loose on us. And then every latch, I'm just gonna get my fingers quickly on it. I'm gonna make sure that they're tight. I'm always um, turning them in the tightening direction. It's kind of a, a funny little tip uh, in the tightening direction because if you're checking it and you just push it a little bit too much, you could actually be popping it open. That's the last thing you want to do. So if you're checking that it's actually tight and closed, you're going to be turning it in the tightening direction. Um, so you're going to go through on that. Um, the fuel cap is something that you should always be touching. So if this is already closed and you haven't seen the fuel cap, particularly if you weren't the one fueling, you want to make sure that that's uh, double checked that that's actually closed properly. And then you come back around, have a look over the, uh, the entire aircraft. So just don't just uh, duck under the tail boom. Come all the way around, make sure that there's nothing that you're missing in the back here. And then same thing down this side. We're just gonna check that those final cowlings are all closed up and doors are latched. Okay, now we're ready to hop in the helicopter and go flying. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it a little bit instructive and a little bit uh, informative. If you did, um, you can always like this video and we're gonna talk to you on the next one. See you later.